of the Marina Skewer podcast. Today I've got lots of spinning and fibre related stuff for you because I'm a tiny bit obsessed. Um, you will have seen, if you've seen the last couple of episodes, that I fairly recently started spinning again after a long break. And the fact that I can now spin whilst the child is awake is a huge deal. Um, he now knows that if you stick it, stick your hand in it, it goes out. Um, and so he doesn't do that, which means that I can get a little bit more crafting done during the day. Um, and so I've been doing loads of spinning. First up, I'm going to show you a couple of knitting projects, but even one of those is in hand spun yarn. So, oh no, I will start with what I'm wearing because otherwise I'll forget. Uh, this is my Galdor cardigan. Um, I designed it, in fact, I designed both of these around the same time a couple of years ago. Um, this is the Galdor cardigan. It's got lots of steaks. It uses three different um, limited edition yarns from Woolly Mammoth Fibres. They're all undyed ones. Um, and it's just a super fun one. You can make it using two colours. Um, the th three colours aren't actually super obvious because it's quite subtle, but it's more obvious if I show you the facing on the inside. So I've done a folded over facing to cover the steak and the floats of the colour work on the band here. Um, and I've got the same on the sleeves. And you can see there that this grey is very slightly darker than this grey. So this one, I believe, is a blue texel. Maybe it's just texel. I feel like it's mixed with something. Um, and then the white is Dorset, and then the darker grey is Jacobs. Um, and it's just, I wear it all the time this time of year, especially when England being as it is, summer isn't summer. Uh, it's very grey, we've had so much rain. Um, after some really nice weather, we've had like a month of not much sun lots and lots of rain. The garden's doing astoundingly, but I don't really get out much to enjoy it because it's constantly raining. Uh, so this is really nice for throwing on and then when the sun comes out you can take it off really quickly and then five minutes later you can put it back on because it's cold again. Uh, nice wide sleeves help with that and the fact that they're not long means there's just no faff, um, which I hadn't really thought of as being the main thing I would enjoy about the garment uh, when I designed it, but it's just, it's super fun. And then this top is Dryopteris. So it's got a little, I don't know if you can see there, um, little traveling stitch details down the side, little bit of a split hem, quite high up um, armholes. You can lengthen those if you choose to. Um, and yeah it's very fine it's done with a what is a four ply yarn but feels a lot lighter um four ply weight not four ply construction uh it's the vintage 20 four ply from wool decanted and this is uh again undyed fiber i believe it's a shetland blue faced leicester blend um and all british wool and spun and processed down in Cornwall, I believe. Um, so yes, Dryopteris. And then this one's Galdor, which I'm gonna put back on for now because, you know. Um, both of these, just for the next couple of days, because we're at the tail end of it, are on 15% off with the code Galopteris, which I realize is a completely stupid word, but it made me giggle. Um, so that's Galdor, Gal, Dryopteris. Opteris. Uh, so I will put that in the description box below. That is it just for the next three days. 15% um, off one or both of the patterns if you choose because they're nice sort of summer knits but also they carry well into the rest of the year with layering and stuff. It's cool. And so I shall show you my scrumper which I haven't made as much progress on as I thought I might have. Um, so I'm 
I only have this much left of the first ball that I'm working on and I have one ball left which is about right because I think I'm about halfway through where I want to be because this is going to be fairly cropped um, it's going to be a waistcoat so it'll go like this uh, I did show this in the last episode and I can't actually remember how far I got through it then I don't think I was very far um, but I'm just about to do the final buttonhole and then I will separate for the underarms and the v-neck and I'll be working from there so hopefully I'll be able to get this ready to wear in the next few weeks, couple of months, don't know, I'm not hurrying it um, both of the things I'm showing you are things that I'm not really hurrying, I'm just sort of chilling out with because I've had quite a lot of deadline knitting recently and I'm working on various submissions for designs um, which means lots of swatching and sketching and that sort of thing um, and so these are just background projects that can fit in around other stuff and so this is hand spun. I think I showed this yarn last time, maybe. Um, this is Fernhill Fibre. Uh, it's from their Silvery Tops, which is beautiful. It was really lovely to spin. Uh, it was the first thing I spun when I got back into spinning in this house. Um, and it's just really nice. It's undyed um, grey fibre from their long wool flock. And then this, in this amusing tiny basket, um, the basket's made of ivy. I made it on a walk a few years ago um, and was probably thoroughly annoying to be on a walk with because I had to keep running off into the hedges to find more ivy. Um, but it's held up really well, I'm surprised and pleased. Um, and it's just quite cute. So this yarn is left over from my ironwork tea which is a design by Diana Waller. Um, I knitted it with this as the contrast colour and a very pale green as the main colour, which um, I worked with the leftover green for another top recently, which was my Ciro or Chiro top. Um, yes, so I'm combining these two Sorry, I'm a little bit all over the place today. My brain is full of fluff. I'm combining them for a Leoma shawl, which is a shawl I designed quite a long time ago. Um, and it's designed for two colours with nice stripes on it. The stripes on the original sample are a bit more random. Uh, in fact, I'm gonna go and get that for you right now. This is the original sample. Um, so this is my Leo Michel. This one is in um, Luma by the Fibre Co, which is merino wool and I think a little bit of silk and then some linen. And so it's really nice and drapey. It's a smallish shawl which is good for summertime. Well, and for tra transitional stuff. Um, and it just sits nicely there and so it's got um, two colours. This one's a nice sort of greeny bluey grey that I really really enjoy and then a yummy buttery yellow. Um, and this is the stripe pattern that's written in the pattern but then the one that I'm doing here I'm just doing regular stripes but they are super subtle because the yarns are quite low contrast um, and I'm doing eight rows alternating so they're, they're sort of stripes within stripes they're meta stripes um, so two rows of just the grey and then eight rows alternating the grey and the sort of pinky brown. And I'm just going to do that all the way through and I'm doing that because um, I have more of the contrast colour yarn than I had for the original sample and so I think 
doing it like this should use up most of both of the yarns. Now I don't have meterage on the yarns because I didn't bother measuring. Um, so I doubt I'll be able to use up both of them, but when I get to the end of one of them, I will just bind off and call it done. So it should be slightly larger than the original. And also I'm working at a slightly looser gauge. I'm using 4.5 millimeter needles instead of the four millimeter ones that I used for the original one, because I wanted it to be very sort of light and floaty and bouncy. And they're kind of, whilst both still being my sort of slightly muted thing, they're both very, very different vibes. <laughs> I like this one is sort of high contrast and it feels quite summery, whereas this feels sort of foggy and cosy and wintry and I'm not going to need to wear it for hopefully quite a while, but um, when the cold weather comes, I will be ready for it. And it's kind of the vibe I'm going for with my hand spun stuff. I'm, I'm getting to the point where I have quite a lot of garments, especially garments um, that I've made in hand spun yarn in sort of dirty pastels, sort of very low saturation, fairly pale colours. Um, and I'm just really enjoying how they combine and how they look. And yeah, so in that vein, beast of a spinning project. Um, I finally got some of my grey off the spinning wheel. So this is Um, I actually labelled them because I did measure them and I didn't want to forget how much they were. Uh, so this one, this smaller one is 89 grams and then this larger one is 169. And in total is 871 metres, which is a lot more than I expected it to be. Um, I kept saying, especially over on Instagram and I think on the couple of times I've mentioned on here, that this felt like it was taking a very long time. And I'm, I am spinning quite fine and it's a three ply, so you have to spin a lot more singles than you would for a two ply. Um, but then when I was winding it off the bobbins, because I literally just spun as much as I could fit on my bobbins. Uh, and then when I plied it up and was winding it off my big plying bobbin, I sort of had wound off this much and I was thinking, this is definitely going to be too much to be one skein. So I did this one as well. Uh, you know, I just broke it off um, and then wound the rest off onto this. I wasn't expecting it to be... I was expecting less than 200 grams and this is 260-ish grams. Um, which is really pleasing because it means I've only got about 140 grams left of fluff to spin. Um, which means I'm well over halfway through this project, which is encouraging because it's, it's just nice and motivating to feel you got past the halfway point without really even noticing. Um, so yes, this is a whole mishmash of fibres. Um, I did a Patreon video a few months ago about the fibres that went into here and the process of making the bats. And... I'm going to be making a Mistland cardigan, which is a design I released back in August last year, and I didn't really like the sample that I made originally because it was for a publication, and so I'm going to make a new one.
So next up is another spinning project which I started in the last episode. Well, I didn't start the spinning, I started the processing. Um, so this little basket of fibre is what I've been working on. So this is half the fibre that is left because I've done the first half already. So we've got two different fibre tops from John Arban Textiles and then this is a bat from Celie McQueely. And I have already spun and plied them and I was very intrigued to see how they would ply together because I, I was sort of a bit bold with my fibre choices here. Uh, I've not really planned a spinning project like this and I've not done a marl of three different fibres before. It was all a bit of an experiment and so I've got little bits left on my bobbins. This is the Sage Sprig Devonia from John Arban and then this is uh, the bat and I have like a fair bit left of the bat not much at all of the sage sprig and then I ran out of the nasturtium first and I think that's because I spun this bobbin first and have a tendency to get finer and finer as I go so I suspect I spun the bat a lot finer and I will say I planned my bobbins and which order I was going to spin them based on the order in, what, in which I expected to enjoy them. And so I did this one first because it was a fun one to start off with but its tops are fairly straightforward. Um, and then I did the bat because that was the one I was really excited about spinning and wanted to see how it would spin up. And then I left the sage sprig, sprig until last because I expected to enjoy spinning it the least because it's it's not quite a solid colour but it's mostly just slightly mushy green and it's tops so it's not a particularly interesting preparation or anything and so I thought this would be quite dull to spin and at that point I would be motivated to get through the bobbin so that I could ply and see what the actual yarn would turn out to be like. This one ended up by far being my favourite one to spin, like really 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 enjoyed it. Um, it's, it's sort of got a a nice amount of toothiness but it's not it doesn't drag it's got nice long fibers so a long staple length um, they're fairly sort of sleek fibers there's not loads of crimp there it's just really enjoyable um, it, it, it just spun like a dream I had loads of fun and so highly recommend John Arban Devonia um, for if you like your sort of slightly rustic British breeds. Um, yeah, all of that to say, I have my yarn. So this is the first skein. It should be 150 grams but given that we've got this much still left on the bobbin it's likely to be more like 145 or something. Um, and it's, <laughs> it's so perfectly sludgy green, it's everything I could have dreamed of. Um, and I realised that my yarn spinning and the way I plan my yarns is quite different to what a lot of people hope for. Like I know a lot of people when they look at multicoloured tops for example want to work out a way to preserve those colours and to not blend them all together and get them all muddy looking. Whereas I'm like how muddy can I make this yarn? Um, so I I just I'm really pleased with how it turned out. The bits of orange from the nasturtium here which they are bright orange in there but because there's a lot of white and grey in this tops um, they end up spinning up looking quite sort of peachy terracottery and they do a perfect job of counteracting the really vibrant aqua in the bat. Uh, because the aqua is very pretty but I don't want too much of it going on because it's just quite vibrant. Um, and so I think it's done a really really nice job of basically making visually very interesting but sludgy green yarn. Um, another thing to note with this was this was my first attempt at spinning a true 
worsted spun yarn. Now obviously this is from a bat, but it's a bat that's sort of made from lots of fibre tops just sort of blended together. Um, so it's as close as I can get to a worsted spun. And so it's my first time trying actual worsted spinning because I have previously always just done my default spin and never re other than trying to vary weight a little bit, I've never tried like I've tried a little bit of long draw for a more woolen spun thing, but I've never intentionally tried to do something different with my spinning style. And I watched a couple of videos from Bex Tiny Fibre Studio um, from her 51 Yarns series on woolen and worsted spinning and the specific characteristics of each. And I will link those videos below because they're really, really interesting. And I, I've always known sort of the difference between woolen and worsted in terms of preparation, but I had never really paid much attention to how different they would be in terms of actual drafting style and how you spin them. So the big difference with what I was doing here, because I've done a lot of short forward draw, which is what you need for a worsted spin, but I have not smoothed and compressed the yarn as I spin it. Um, I've not done that previously and that is what I did here. So where a lot of my hand spun is quite sort of lofty and bouncy and fluffy looking, uh, which I really enjoy, for this one I wanted to try something more sleek and compact. Um, and I think that's turned out really nicely. Uh, it was slightly counterintuitive to just have to keep my fingers on the yarn that I'm spinning. Um, but yeah, once I got into a rhythm of it, it was really nice. So yeah, the aim with this, I haven't actually measured it, but I'm fairly sure it'll be probably a sport weight, which is what I was aiming for. Like there were times where I, I was, I kept panicking thinking, oh my God, this is going to be really fat. It's going to be like a DK weight, which would probably mean that I might not have enough for a garment. Um, I didn't want to go as fine as a fingering because I keep accidentally spinning too fine. This was meant to be a DK, but I knew as I was spinning it that that wasn't going to be the case because it's definitely a light four ply. So, meh. Ah. So yes, I actually spun vaguely the weight I think I was hoping for with this. I will measure it up, see what I've got going on. And with these, I'm now just going to spin the rest of the fiber straight onto the same bobbins and just sort of carry on where I left, well, at the point that these were finished from the ply and then do the whole bobbin of this one and then ply them together. And I will probably have some leftovers and depending how much I have left over, if I have a decent amount of both the of, of these ones, um, if these are the ones that happen to be left over, I'll probably, I might three ply, so do two plies of the sage break because I have a little bit more of this one because um, there was just a little bit extra when I bought it. Um, so I could do two plies of this and one ply of the bat. We'll see how I go. So yes, that will be my next, well, my continued spinning project. And then I will clear these bobbins completely and then return to the rest of the gray and get that all finished. And then I can cast on for my gray cardigan. So final thing to show you, got a big basket of bats. Um, I have been very, very, very busy at the Carters recently, uh, which is why I haven't taken a huge amount of time for knitting. Um, I asked in the last episode if anyone would be interested in some bats, and a few people said they were keen, and I've been really enjoying the fibre prep and everything recently, so I have got these all ready and they are now on my website. Now I know that a couple of them have sold already, so these are all 
limited edition, non-repeatable, um, which is the way I like it. It's super fun. Uh, I don't have to take notes on anything. I can just play and make really nice fibre blends that I hope people are going to enjoy spinning. So each bat is 25 grams because my um, my card isn't super high capacity and with some blends I could probably fit, well with some blends I know I can fit a lot more on there but for the sake of simplicity I've made them all 25 grams. Um, so they range from like super sleek, um, this one's got lots of Shetland and a little bit of Merino and a lot of soy fibre in it. Um, this one has loads of mohair and tease water and then quite a bit of soy. Um, this one's super sleek. Well, there are two of these. Like some, They look very different sizes but that's because I rolled this one more tightly than this one. Um, so they range from super sleek to like really really matte and bouncy. Uh, so this one is Shetland and Kent Romney and again a little bit of Merino. Um, and this one's got like lots of little slubby bits so it'll be quite tweedy. Um, for a couple of them I've done little samples where I had a little bit of extra fibre. Um, just done some little yarn samples. So you can kind of see, like you don't necessarily have to spin the same way but it's just so you can see what kind of yarn it might make um, and how they might spin up. And I haven't done it for all of them because that will be a lot of time and I don't necessarily have loads of each of the fibres, but it's just kind of a little example. I really like this one, it's super fun. Uh, that is these ones. Um, which are just Mohair and Kent Romney and it's a blend I really really like. I've done it a few times before. Uh, it's adult Mohair so it's really really long sleek staples um, and then the Kent Romney is matte and fuzzy and this particular batch of fleece has quite a lot of little neppy bits and so it makes it sort of matte and tweedy um, and it's super fun and I recorded a video of the making of these ones which actually have quite a lot of different greens in them. The bats are escaping me. Come back! Um, and so yeah I made a video of how I made these ones for my Patreon channel um, in case you would like to maybe consider blending up some fibres yourself. Um, I know a couple of people at least who have seen um, me use the card either in person or via like reels and stuff on Instagram. I'm now very tempted to get carders and if you do a lot of spinning and are more interested in um, preparing your own fibres, uh, especially if you want to work with local fibres and are thinking on a long-term scale um, in terms of you might want to buy a fleece and process it over however long or you might want to regularly buy fleeces. Um, I would really recommend getting a drum card. I know it's an investment, I've had mine for a very long time, um, but even just for my personal projects the amount of money it saved on you know the difference between fleece and pr commercially prepared fibre has probably paid for it itself in that regard. Um, I love these ones. I keep doing brownie pinks. I, I actually I know a lot of people think I don't like pink at all. There are lots of pinks that I strongly dislike. Um, I do like a brownie pink. Uh, I like a terracotta-y, apricot-y pink. Um, Basically, if it's pink but it's sludgy, I'm probably going to enjoy it. Um, but every time when I'm trying to come up with names for them, I have to think of things that aren't meaty. Because it just looks a bit meaty. 
I didn't call those ones bacon, I called them astrantia because they are like pretty flowers, not like breakfast meat. <laughs> yes, so that's up on the website now. Um, I really hope you're going to enjoy them. 25 grams each, so it's a fairly small amount of fibre and you can either just get like all the ones that are available for a larger project or you can just get one bat to try it out or you could for example get like some of these and some of these and ply them together that would be really pretty um there are lots of options available to you and i hope you can you, you spinners and people who are actually interested in bats i hope you're going to enjoy that um so then finally i think that's pro probably the final thing yeah um, I'm just going to show you this because I, f I feel like the last maybe two or three months I'm getting back into a lot of the stuff that I used to do and I have much less time for it and so <laughs> when I scatter my efforts across lots of different things I end up with tiny amounts of things which aren't necessarily very useful so Here's some nettle fibre from my garden. Um, I have a lot of nettles growing in the back garden because if you've heard me talk about the garden before, uh, if I say I'm working in the garden, it's almost certainly in the front garden, which is, you know, it faces the road and it's where people come through to the house. And it, it was already in okay shape, although it's needed a lot of work and still needs a lot of work. The back garden is just wilderness um and so there are lots of nettles out there some of them are very very long and being strangled by bindweed uh and so i have processed nettles before i did so a few years ago a uh, couple of years i don't remember um and so i just felt like going out there and seeing how they were doing uh, so separated out this much fiber so these i processed fresh um, if you know anything about nettle fibre, it's a bast or bast fibre, um, similar to flax and hemp, but it is a bit weaker than flax. And it starts out this lovely green colour, but eventually this is left over from last time I did nettle processing. And this started out that nice green colour, but has faded to this very pretty sort of straw gold. Um, so this is uh, this is from this batch. This is the same stuff from the previous batch. This is sort of the waste fibre but with further processing can be made usable but obviously it's tiny tiny amounts and so it's, it's just... I have more nettles outside retting. Uh, so retting is the process of um, leaving them outside and exposing them to water, whether you submerge them in water or whether you dew wet them, which is what I'm doing, which is just leaving them on the ground and letting the dew and rain get to them. Um, and that breaks down the, I believe it's pectin, that sticks together the fibres on the outside because they've got sort of pith on the inside and then the useful fibres on the outside, but they're all stuck together with like barky stuff. Let's see if I can find one for you. So this is quite... I'm not going to be able to see that. Um, so there are coarse ones but then once you split them and break them down you get these really nice fine fibres. Um, and yeah, so the retting ideally breaks down the external fibres so that they are easier to process and turn into textile stuff. I'm unlikely to have enough nettle fibre to do anything substantial with um, something that I would really 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 like to watch is The Nettle Dress which is a film by Dylan Howitt and Alan Brown. I believe Dylan is the director and Alan is king of nettle fibre. Um, he 
has made a dress out of nettles that he's harvested from the same patch of woodlands over about seven years. Um, and it just looks like the most beautiful film and the most inspiring project and I would really love to see the film and see the dress and yeah I'm on the lookout for screenings and I think there's going to be one that I might be able to get to at some point soon but keeping an eye out and so yeah I mean I'm just looking around because I've still got my carder set up over that over there there's still boxes of fibre everywhere um I went to find my loom yesterday to hopefully do some weaving but I can't find the yarn that I want to use for the weaving because everything is still chaos since we moved house and I don't know where the yarn is but instead of finding the yarn I just found even more unprocessed flax <laughs> and it's just it's, there's flax and fleece everywhere and I keep thinking I'm working through it and I'm getting it you know, done and spun and moving it on, then I just find more. Um, which is a lovely position to be in, but I don't know how I've accumulated quite so much fibre. Um, so yes, but having said that, I'm really enjoying myself. I'm, I'm back into what I call fibre dorkery, so taking things from very, very basic materials, taking them through multiple processes by hand, or at least in a non-electricity powered way and turning them into things you can wear and use. Um, next project. That's what I want to do actually. My god, like all over the place. Tiny amounts of nettle fibre. I had an idea for this earlier. Um, I can't, I can't really do anything wearable with this. Like oh, the thing I have in mind I can't do with this either. But if I add more nettles to this, it's something that doesn't need to be soft. Um, I have just upgraded my camera. I don't know if that's going to be evident from this video, but hopefully there will be some quality improvements and it's a lot more easy to use. Um, my old camera was very old. And yes, it came without a strap for reasons. So I would like to make a nettle strap for it. I might blend it with some flax just to speed things along a bit. But I think that would be a nice manageable project for very local small amounts of plant fibre. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so lots of stuff. Um, I did want to tell you about a nice adventure I had a couple of weekends ago. Um, I say adventure, we mostly stayed in the house. Uh, cat, cat weaver of previously the Heather and Hops and now just Cat Weaver um, came to visit after a long time of trying to plan stuff. Um, she came and she brought her spinning wheel and she brought a lot of fibre um, and she had, I think she'd been following this project and how much I was complaining about it and um, and so she wanted to prepare fibre for her first garment quantity of hand spun yarn and had a lot of undyed fibre but was saying that she thought that it might be a bit not the most exciting to spin uh, in large quantities and so I just said you know bring whatever you want to bring, we can have a look at it, we can see what we think. If we want to, we can do some processing, we can do some dyeing, we can have a bit of a play. And so we ended up carding up, uh, well, dyeing most but not all of the fibre, and then letting it dry overnight, <laughs> encouraging it outside in net bags and waving it around and stuff, uh, so that it would be dry the next day, so that we could card it up. And we made a load of bats and she's going to be spinning that into a garment quantity of green gorgeousness. Um, so if you want to see the process of making those bats, do go ahead to Kat's channel, which I will link below again, because um, she's got some footage on her latest podcast episode and it was just really, really nice to spend some time with her and just chill out and do some nice crafty stuff. Um, yeah, I think. Do I have other things to show you? 
think that's all the things I need to show you. Sorry about the like slightly frenetic fiber obsession, but I'm just so happy. It feels like I'm properly back. Um, so yes, bats, bats everywhere. If you like fiber and spinning and want to try possibly ones that are a little bit different to what you often see, um, cause most of the fibers are completely processed by hand rather than either just being dyed by hand or just blended. Um, they're all dyed by hand. A lot of them go through the card multiple times to get them to a state that I'm happy with. Um, and so the blends are just a little bit interesting and different. Uh, so yes, <laughs> if you want to catch me before the next podcast episode, uh, go and follow me on Instagram if you're not there already and do sign up to my newsletter where I post about new stuff that's going up in the shop. And if you want to help support the channel, um, go over and take a look at Patreon. There's always new stuff there. Um, you get access to shop updates before most other people. And we've got a nice little discord group and it helps things like helping me afford a new camera when it's needed. Um, so yeah, everyone's support there is much pre appreciated. And if you're not going to join, that's cool. Thank you for being here. And I will catch you next time. Bye bye.